Hello, and welcome to Horror Rewind. This is Kelly Florence. And this is Nate Payne. And today we're talking about the new Slumber Party Massacre. Nate, thank you, thank you, thank you for telling me about this movie, because as I mentioned to you um, before, during when we were watching it, I wasn't a fan of the original, and so, but I had heard good things about this one, so knowing that it had your stamp of approval, I went in fully on board, and I freaking loved it. Yeah, yeah. I um, hadn't seen the original uh, in a really long time, and didn't really know anything about it. Uh, other than after we watched the remake, when you had said, like, oh, I didn't, uh, well, remember we had talked about how the original was written by a feminist and all this stuff. And then you had said something like you felt like it, it, it doesn't come across in that movie. Right. Right. (laughs) And I, I agree after having revisited it, um, like immediately after we watched the remake, I was like, oh. This really is kind of like, I feel like they kind of missed the mark, but also for the time, maybe, I don't know. It's, yeah. it's before my time. So I don't know what the actual message would have been, but yeah. yeah. But oh I my just, God, though, you'd think that this movie like destroyed the lives of men around this country. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So Nate has been showing me some screenshots of, is it a Reddit thread? Uh, no, I hang out on the Blu-ray.com boards. Oh, okay. So it's a, <laughs> it's a board. And people are really missing the point of of this satire and the humor and the cheekiness of it all, pun intended. Um, mm-hmm. But you have to share a little bit of that discourse, if you would. Well, one guy who was like, one, one of my favorite comments was something along the lines of like, uh, there weren't any bare breasts or anything. This movie's sexless and bloodless. They didn't even show a woman's butt. There's no sex in it. It's so, it's, it's, and it's so forced and it's too woke. And oh, characters seemed forced. And I pointed out the scene where, you know, she took her boobs out and was like, I'm tired of playing this role. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, did this movie just completely fly over your head? I know. Like, completely? <laughs> He's like, Ugh, yeah, the whole thing. It was very, very silly. And thankfully, the next day after this like ridiculous conversation started, a few other people came in and were like, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. The the bloodless comment got me too, because after everyone was like, You didn't understand the parody part, he was like, Well, it's bloodless. And then I was like, Did you miss the guitar string kill yeah like you can't call that no it has good kills oh my god (laughs) so i I, we i will say friends if you're still listening we have this is spoil gonna get into spoilers now so go see it if you haven't seen it but this this movie it was so clever because it kept every time you thought you knew what they were going to do or where it was going it flipped it on its head so first of all you think oh this is you know, they show it back, was it 93, the flashback? Yeah, the very opening scene was very like, this is the remake part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so you think, okay, like, th- this is what the movie's going to be. But then it wasn't. Also, one of my favorite lines happens. The guy is watching them, like, the girls uh, in the cabin, and he's got his hand on his hands, <laughs> and he sees the other another guy looking through, and he's like, pervert? <laughs> like, yes. that was so funny. <laughs> Yes, that in the first, I feel like that line really set the tone. And also it's worth pointing out, it's a dude jerking himself off, looking at someone else going, you're a pervert. Like yeah. that's, <laughs> it's the same as the guy on the message board. Yes. This game is, or this, this, this movie's dumb because it doesn't show any tits. Like, <laughs> you're not. <laughs> oh, I, I, I specifically pointed out, I was like, so it's woke because it has butts in it of yeah. men. Yeah. But like broke because it has no lady boobs. Oh boy. <laughs> it's like if only there were dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of slasher movies aimed at straight guys. Yeah. <laughs> if like, only. I just I can't I I just can't even believe it. Um oh. the, this then the movie you know goes into the present day, quote unquote, and we see these girls that we think it's gonna be them going on this trip, but really they're going out there to set the trap for the killer. And so it just keeps, and they, they're the ones who actually broke down their own vehicle in order to recreate um, 
what this girl's mother and her friends went through. I, I loved it so much. And the guys, like the guys at the cabin across the lake, like literally two guys named guy. (laughs) Yes. That was amazing. Like the generic. And I do have to say too, like the guys in the movie are presented as like decent people. Like they're just like regular dudes. And I liked that. Um, Yeah. They didn't even try to make them like, Oh, wow. There's, they're sexist pigs. No, like they were just dudes. Yeah, they're yeah. having a good time. Yeah, they they definitely were having a good time. That pillow fight, like I remember doing that in high school all the time. Like we would, you know, take trips out to cabins and have pillow fights. <laughs> oh my god, it was so funny. And um, you mentioned the guitar that that's from a sequel. I believe so. Yeah, the guitar itself was in I think the second movie. If I have read the internet correctly <laughs> yeah that kill was amazing like the well the guitar string on the drill and like every every kill was amazing and gory and like yeah. fun, fun gore like the drill through the all the parts <laughs> that happens yeah. to bunch of people like yeah i i anyone who tells you that this movie is bloodless and sexless has not seen this movie no exactly. <laughs> now i was looking at the um writer and director the director i see that she is from canada and north of us actually she went to winnipeg um film school and then i saw the writer worked on ash versus evil dead for, for i did not know that. yeah so that's cool so she was in the writer's room for that show that's oh, you know. that's I do love that show. <laughs> At my now. <laughs> and that, you know, I always say like horror comedy I, is my favorite genre. I think it's the toughest to pull off. But mm-hmm. Ash versus Evil Dead obviously nailed it. And I think this movie nailed it. So you can tell that okay, she was she's in the right place. Like this is what she should be writing. Yeah, I agree with that completely. I and I agree in general on horror comedy. Um, I don't know why watching like extremely copious amounts of like gore flying across the screen on people is like hilarious to me i, know I don't know what that is. about me but <laughs> but like, like it's it's funny because like there's a line where it's you know not enough is kind of lame or whatever and then there's a line where it's like that's too real and I, i'm like it's making me uncomfortable which can be a good thing if that's what the movie's going for right. and then but once you start introducing like using words like gallons when describing yeah (laughs) then it's like hilarious yes you know it's funny that you say that because we were just talking and i i won't spoil it in case i won't say what what we were watching but meg and i were talking about um something that we watched recently and they had to dismember a body and it was it the tone was serious and it was real and the gore was like uncomfortable because of the tone but mm-hmm. at the same time, you know, we watched much more ridiculous things in this movie and it's hilarious. So it's just literally right, right. about setting that tone and what sort of mind frame are you in? Yeah, I do think that says that kind of to circle back to the original Slumber Party Massacre. I feel like from what I've read, it was written to be a parody and then the director was sort of. It's unclear to me whether it was her decision to make it like film it straight or if that was something forced on her like I I, I've read kind of different um conflicting things but but yeah like that movie you know written to be funny but then it is shot in a way where it's not funny right you know like yeah Yeah. (laughs) it it takes a, a a specific eye I guess yeah I and I haven't like you did, I haven't revisited it again because I was just so disappointed when I saw it the first time. I'm like, okay, I can't, but you know, maybe I'll go in with this, this fresh outlook and see what I think. But it like you said, it's- to watch with like the knowledge of what it's supposed to be. Cause I had no idea okay. um, until this movie came out that that movie was ever meant to be anything other than just like a, another slasher. Yeah. And I watched it. I, and I know like the, the women in that fight back at one point. And I think that was sort of the, like, this is the feminist thing, but like, it's, it really is something that most slashers of the era did. Right. You know, like final girl is a thing because of the eighties yeah, yeah. <laughs> and seventies, but like the, um, 
Oh, shoot. Where was I going with that? Oh, no. I hate when my brain gets sidetracked like that. It's okay. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I... I love I love this movie. I love how unhinged the killer is, and he just literally has the look on his face. Oh my god, I want to play that guy. That uh, that would be fun. That would be a fun <laughs> role to play. And when they they kill him, and then the other the sister the little sister comes in and just stabs him a bunch of times. Like that was hilarious. She was hilarious too. Yeah, her whole like when she first appeared, and they're like, "This is supposed to be our weekend. You weren't invited." And she's like, "Yeah, I know. That's why I had to come." <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> She was wonderful. I liked her a lot. I liked the whole cast. Yes. Um, there were, I felt like across the board, um, it was good. And and it was interesting because, yeah, there is a point, like at that point when it's revealed that they're, so like, yes, after they kill him and then there's the rest of the movie where it flipped once again, yeah. all of a sudden everyone's performances become a lot more real. Yep. Because before they were prior- part. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that was another thing like that message board dude clearly flew over his head. He's like, it was bad acting. And it's like they right, literally did that in the movie. Like they said, we're yeah. acting for on purpose. Yeah. Oh, people are weird. And <laughs> yeah, like the, the one girl was playing like the dumb, the, the dumb character. And she had a lot of good one liners. But then, of course, when it flips again, everybody became their real selves and right and she is the mechanic yes and she's super smart (laughs) i love that her one-liners were amazing and also i do think some of those one-liners were things like i felt represented by her a little oh yeah Yeah. (laughs) like i'm capable with some things but i also (laughs) say a lot of really dumb things sometimes on purpose (laughs) sometimes they just that's what they are (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I I loved it. I loved it. Oh, and I love when the, the guys came over and I can't remember the dialogue exactly because I've only watched it once, but the the tall guy's like, I've got a girlfriend. Like immediately he's going to shut yeah. it down. <laughs> yes, yes. Their fear of them was hilarious too. Yeah. Like, and it made perfect sense. Like the things they were seeing these women oh, do, yeah. like out of context, it was like, whoa, yeah. we need to leave. Um, I also did absolutely love when they did go to the guys and the guys all of a sudden were like, okay, we're taking care of this. You all wait here. Yeah. We're leaving. And then the one guy, when, you know, he's like, I, they're like, don't go, don't go. And he's like, I don't want to, but my toxic masculinity. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, so funny. And again, like it just was perfectly set up. They set up the world so well and Uh, in space so that there's this how to get from one cabin to the other and that the the baddie at the end end up being the mother of Mm -hmm. the killer like that was so good and I just I could I can picture it perfectly and it all it's just like a nice little package of a movie yeah yeah it it kind of hits on the beats of really all the classic 80s slashers but wrapped up in a nice little like modernized package that yeah. still manages to be hilarious. And, and the few times where they really like, you know, beat you over the head with the message. That's the joke. Yeah. Is that they're doing that. It's not that they're beating you over the message because you need to be beat with it. It's like, that's right. why it's funny is because they're beating so hard with it. And that was, these are just points that I, I guess some people see it and some don't. (laughs) Yeah, no. And uh, like exactly what you said, like that is the joke and that is the point. And yet it's not making fun of it. It's like, it's it's in such a clever way that it's lovable. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I guess that's, that's a good way to put it. It's lovable. It didn't feel insulting or preachy. Preachy is a good word. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it had, it did what it did and it did it well. I was very, very shocked, especially because it was made for sci-fi. Yeah. Like I wasn't expecting much. <laughs> so did it must have premiered on the sci-fi channel in the fall? Is that right? I think so. I don't really know about I'm this. I'm so out of the loop on like live TV stuff because I just stream everything. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, I had no idea it was a sci-fi movie until after I had watched it the first time. I was just like, oh, they remade Slumber Party Massacre. I should see this. Now, we <laughs> watched it, of course, um, streaming or renting, and and it's on Blu-ray now. Is that right? Yes, it came out on Tuesday. Okay, so yeah. 
um, friends, watch the, not the TV version, watch the, the, um, unrated or the regular version, because then you get the, the butts. <laughs> the butts are cut. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, I saw a picture. It's not that the butts are cut. It's that there's CGI steam. Oh, okay. Overlaid. So you just don't see them, which is really unfortunate. You know, Disney Plus <laughs> does that um, in the movie Splash with Daryl Hannah and Tom Hanks. Yeah. She, she, you never see her butt now, I guess. They like made her hair look longer or something. Anyway, not that it matters, but it was just like a thing I remember. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, we, you know, it's funny you mentioned Disney Plus because I've been rewatching The Simpsons and I'm really surprised at how much there like gets through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause wow, there are some interesting moments in that show. Yeah. It's true. It's been on forever. Uh this movie, we looked up where it was filmed. I was curious, and it was South Africa. Is that right? Am I remembering? Yeah. Yeah. I think like Cape Town or something in that vicinity yeah it's really pretty there (laughs) i always am like whenever i see movies shot there i'm always like where's the shot i know i'm i'm always fascinated and there's so many movies being shot you know elsewhere Mm -hmm. uh i guess for incentive reasons but um i thought the setting was perfect it was it was brilliant yeah the cabin they stayed in reminded me of my uncle's cabin growing up that same like kind of like kitschy junky rustic like this has been sitting here largely ignored over the last decade (laughs) yeah like i i love that kind of stuff but also i don't have like terrible arachnophobia or anything (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) i Uh, yeah i i loved it and i would um i also love how they brought in it into the modern era like there's this crime podcast and like of course there vi- people visit it because of the you know yeah, they want to yeah. retrace the steps and that's just so clever yeah i i did love the, how many times they threw back to that podcast too yeah. like that like the mother complaining about it and the guy with the shirt like he came because of it and they were there that was like their cover story they were there because of it yes. and, um and then when when the one guy outside met the guy yes. <laughs> and was like oh we're here because of you <laughs> <laughs> oh i was like he's gonna die <laughs> i know i know i felt sorry for them and and like the guy who came with the the car part y- you would think maybe he's going to be a creeper but he was just totally innocent too and he ended up getting murdered mm-hmm. oh, yeah. so good. oh and also like i've i've said this before and i'll say it again it was well done but i don't like to see people realistically vomit on screen and that oh god that was so rough. much and they even had the camera like in the bucket at one for one shot and <laughs> she like went right on the camera oh lord it was very convincing yeah. love too. It wasn't just like, I'm going to put some soup in my mouth and then right. like spit it up. It was like, I'm going to uh, really a lot. Yeah, that was uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. For sure. I felt terrible about those, that like, that whole thing with the cookies and her just consistently throwing up. But yeah, I was like, I feel like I've been there. Yeah. Oh God, that's because, the worst. Yeah. There's nothing worse than throwing up. I agree. It's awful. And then that poor girl, uh, like we were saying, I can't remember any characters' names right now, but when she was trying to fix the car and, and her death, that was so sad. Oh, and the, the blade thing, they took the guard off. Oh my God, it played into my like hugest childhood fear. Oh, I used really? to sit in the front seat anytime we were driving, which was a lot. I would, anytime I had to sit in the front seat, I was always scared that some like flying, spinning piece of metal, I didn't know what it looked like, but I always figured some like, something from the engine was going to like explode and like rip my legs off. Wow. <laughs> it was just, it's just like weird, rational thing. I was always really scared of something like blowing up into my legs. And um, obviously that's not what happened, but like the spinning yeah. metal situation. And <laughs> it was so clever though, because uh, then they showed like that the guard had been taken off and it's like, you know, do not remove or whatever. And because you're like, yeah, what kind of car part would that be that, it's just right like why is there just a metal fan like open 
Yeah. 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 And see, I, I know so little about engines. Like I, I wouldn't even know (laughs) about that. So I could see myself getting my head like sucked into a like belt or something. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) This is why I bring my car to other people. Yeah. me too. (laughs) Like I can check my oil, but, um, I've, I've never changed it myself. Yeah. I have. It was, I'd prefer to pay someone. Yeah. (laughs) I don't like being under a vehicle with a jack. That's another thing that always, I watch too many horror movies. Yeah. No, I know. Especially under, (laughs) especially like all the final destination movies. Every time anything happens, I'm like, oh my God, what is the final destination? Like sequence of events. It's going to kill me in this moment, you know? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Oh my God. When I read, do you remember last spring when a logging truck lost its load out West? Yes. Oh man. I think of that constantly. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that, that log scene in final destination two ruined driving near trucks for me forever. I And I, probably I, everyone within 30 years of my age. Yeah. I, I think <laughs> I've seen multiple posts about that every year mm-hmm. of people put, pick, you know, posting a picture behind a truck. Yeah. It's yeah. True. That is one of those moments that definitely kind of stuck into the cultural zeitgeist. So I, Absolutely. yeah, I have to say to this movie, I just, there, I I'm enjoying watching different filmmakers remake some of these older movies for a more like modern audience and more like modern sensibilities. And I know that people throw the term woke around all the time. And I feel like different movies pull that in, in varying degrees of success. And I definitely felt like this one did it without, like you said earlier, getting too preachy. Yeah. It could, because it was self-aware like of, of exactly what it was trying to do. Exactly. Exactly. And that's, I can always appreciate when, when that is done yeah and yeah i feel like it, it it stands really well it reminded me of wrong turn yes in that way and the way it was just like constantly flipping the script on you um only obviously wrong turn never tried to be funny right. <laughs> <laughs> like that was an example of a holy god this movie is just like constant stress <laughs> oh yeah um yeah and so uh, on that note like this movie never made me feel stressed. Like I was all along for the ride and I was ready and I never, but exactly. I still never knew what was ha- going to happen. Yeah. I was there to laugh and go, Oh yeah. <laughs> we had I a love, lot of it. <laughs> I love too that the mom was able to come back um, at the end and, you know, get her revenge. Yes. And that was like good fight sequences, like realistic again, not like, um, marvel superhero sort of fight scenes which that's fine sometimes too but this was felt really real right, they weren't going for like malignant yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. so i uh, i thought it was great yeah well i'm glad that we agreed on that and i'm definitely glad i was able to share it with you and yeah and i'm actually especially especially glad that you were like not interested in seeing it yeah, because that was like more exciting. Because I was like, "Oh, she probably doesn't like look up. Like, she probably doesn't know anything about this movie." Then that's awesome. Yeah, I knew nothing. <laughs> uh, the only thing, like, I had seen some people tweet about it and how funny and clever it was, and I'm just like, "Who are you? And do I trust your opinion?" You know, because you just don't know when you see something on Twitter. Right. Yeah. No. For sure. <laughs> so yeah, Twitter is an interesting place to try to find movie recommendations. <laughs> I need some subtle, uh, like an obscure horror movie that I probably have never seen. And people will be like, have you seen the Babadook? Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, oh, now we already talked about this on the podcast, but that reminds me of, you just saw the latest Scream movie. They did yes. a lot of clever, um, I, will, I don't want to say not as clever as this, but they did some references like that about being like elevated horror kind of jokes. And I thought that was, I thought that was nice. It was a nice little wink to the audience. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, I, I don't, I probably shouldn't start talking about that movie because you already did a note on it. And (laughs) yeah, but, but do share your thoughts. 
the meta aspect of that movie was good. I didn't love it as much as some of the other sequels, but um, yeah, the, I liked how they kind of went for the the more quote unquote elevated horror look of it. Um, because leading up to it, I was wondering what they were going to do. And I, I remember saying like the requel thing because right. keeping the name just scream. Um, and I feel like it worked out to varying degrees of success. And yeah, I think some things worked really well and some things didn't. And that's okay. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, I, I don't think there's a bad Scream movie. I would never say one of them are not a movie I would look forward to watching again. Right. Because you can't not love, well, Nev Campbell, for one thing, but like, you know, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Now, I'm curious, I probably not but i'm curious if they would do any spinoffs of this slumber party massacre now if there could be a sequel to this or not i I don't even know what they would do i mean yeah you basically have to do like a mid quill or something yeah with you could you know further the adventures of of uh the driller killer but yeah it, or maybe it, there's going to be like a, a copycat killer now or something kind of like scream yeah yeah i liked how wrapped up it felt though yeah yeah so what like it's one of those remakes that's such a commentary on what came before it that i feel like making a sequel and trying to capture that lightning again is so rare like scream probably is the only one that i can think of that comes to mind that successfully has managed to find new things to bring to that table each time yeah and like this one nailed every point that it was going for so much that like i don't know what a sequel would look like or if if it would be able to be even half as surprising and fresh feeling despite being almost exclusively like tropes and things from other movies right. <laughs> yeah i i obviously will watch whatever um this writer and and director do next because i i really loved it but again not every not every movie needs a sequel it's okay <laughs> yeah yeah i i definitely look forward to seeing what comes next from them because i yeah what else there were projects earlier than this other than you've, you mentioned Ash versus Evil Dead, what else have they done? So this writer, I I have her pulled up here. Um, she also is writing for this show called. Oh, never mind. I lost it. Okay, okay. This writer, she wrote Leprechaun Returns, two thousand eighteen. I have not seen that. Ooh, but that movie was not good. Oh, ah, uh, good. Like and that was, then, uh, we're paying you to do this, and you're doing it to get your foot in the door. <laughs> oh, it oh, was- that show. I think it was. Um, was it on Hulu? Light as a feather. Oh yeah, she wrote That's- on that show. Well, very cool. Like, good for her getting this project. Yeah. And going forward with that, I. Yeah, I just I'm enjoying this sort of 80s style slasher renaissance that we're having, especially because it's kind of like aimed at newer groups. Right. <laughs> you know, it's not just the exact same thing. I just yeah, the the writing lately has been smart. And I also love how horror as a genre just keeps handing out something for everyone like constantly you know these guys on this board complaining about this movie have to wait five minutes for a movie for them you know right right. (laughs) so like they can stop acting like they're being left behind yeah (laughs) i know oh lordy lord yeah well everything's gonna be a fight with the internet yeah (laughs) well let's rank this movie on a scale of zero to ten zero being you hated it ten being it's a perfect movie i think our scale needs to be like the drill with the guitar string right and yeah mangled guitar string faces (laughs) so how many of those do you give slumber party massacre 
Oh God. I hate rating movies like immediately after I see them because I get so excited about them. But I have, I mean, I would have to give it like a nine or 10. Like I freaking love this movie. Yeah. There was no point in it where I was like, this wasn't a deliberate decision to be bad. Like every point that you could say was quote unquote bad was purposeful. Yes. And so I can't knock it for those moments. Um, there wasn't ever a time where I like was like, Bleh. <laughs> no, it, it was never boring. It was always like, okay, what what's happening next? And like, I, I just think of that moment when like the, the timer goes off for the brownies, you know, and, and then there really were brownies or there were like, everything was so freaking funny. Yeah. Just the timing, like it, it just was a very tightly paced fun movie and like you said it's not boring like to me I guess the like I'm really quick to rate things really high if they make me feel like I had fun yeah I no. feel like how oh, it should be but you know, I, no, I agree like um well I'm like giving when we it, saw... I'm giving it a 10 out of 10 too good <laughs> I'm so happy what were you yeah. gonna say Sorry. well I was gonna say it was like when we saw Resident Evil like I loved that movie and had to give it a 10 for myself but like I can also recognize that the movie itself is like really not that great you know um well that's the fun thing about this is like we should be talking about the things that excite us and we're not going to pick apart like camera angles I mean we could but how does it make us feel you know right exactly and and if a movie keeps me entertained solidly then yes I'm gonna love it um and this one did it just yeah beginning to end there was i was never not bored and i think the worst movie or the worst thing a horror movie can be is boring yeah um because yeah you get like so bad it's good those are 10 out of 10 movies as far as i'm concerned um but then you get the so boring that it's bad that are just flooding (laughs) the the they flood the market and it is hard to pick apart and find what's good and what's not good. And it, it sucks when you're scrolling through like Tubi and you see all these movies and like, I, I don't know how often you feel this way, but like, I'll be looking through things that I'm like, I wonder how many of these movies with like really terrible art are actually really good. Yeah. Because there are so many, I don't even click. Yeah. To like see what they're about or anything. Cause it just does nothing for me. And I often wonder how much time you would have to spend watching random like z grade movies before like how many like out of 10 how many of them are going to be fun to watch yeah and you know it could be 10 i don't know yeah <laughs> that's why i always say listeners recommend movies be be vocal about the good ones because it's too hard to like like you said just scrolling through and trying to find stuff i don't have time to to waste on a bad movie you know like right. tell me what to watch <laughs> Yeah, let's let's find the good ones and and I you know being able to like amplify those, especially the like zero budget, um, because I know like if I made something like I would want people to see it if they liked it and I would want people to find it. Yeah, and it's hard to find something without some big name attached to it. I yeah. this is completely off track from talking about the other movie, but <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I think that's like, a big thing. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining me today, Nate. And next time um, you come across something amazing, please invite me over again and we'll talk about it on the podcast. Uh, and same, you have recommended a couple like real bangers lately that I really like. Shudder. Can we just also talk about how Shudder has been just killing it? Yeah. This year and last year, like my God, so many great Shudder originals. Like, yes. Not... I'm not being paid to say that. <laughs> yeah, but you can pay us to say it if you want to, Shutter. Yeah, if they wanted to, I would definitely like Venmo me. <laughs> yeah. All uh, right, I'm going to stop recording, but I'm going to keep talking to you. So until next time, we'll see you in the horror section. Bye.